В доме получается вот обгорел шкаф. Вот эта стена. То, что у нас на вешалке было. Микроволновка и колонка. Ну, остальное просто залили водой. Вот так как-то. А ну, это сплавилось. Russian forces lost more equipment in Ukraine in October than in any month over the last two years of the full-scale invasion, according to latest analysis. Newsweek recalls that since the start of the war on February 24, 2022, the Oryx website has tracked Russian equipment losses using still or video imagery. It says the level of proof required means the real amount of equipment destroyed is significantly higher. It is noted that the figure for last month show that Russian equipment taken out of action has spiked compared with the rest of the year and most of the war as Moscow's forces continue to make incremental gains on the front line at a high cost. Oryx's data analyzed by independent Russian outlet Agents Vo found that Russia had 695 units of equipment destroyed, damaged, abandoned or captured in October. Among the lost equipment, were 253 infantry fighting vehicles, 103 tanks and 41 armoured personnel carriers. There were also four aircraft, comprising of two Sukhoi Su-25 and Su-34 fighter planes, along with an Mi-28 helicopter. The last time it was higher was 1,032 units lost in October 2022 after Ukraine had launched a counter-offensive the previous month that led to a Russian retreat from Kherson and Kharkiv and sparked optimism at Ukraine's ability to fight Moscow's aggression. The month the Ukrainian counteroffensive started in September 2022 saw the highest tally of Russian equipment losses of 1,179 units linked to the retreat from Kharkiv. Despite the high losses, in the last month, Russian forces continue to make incremental gains, especially in the Donetsk regions, where it last month captured the town of Selidov. Vuk Vuksanovic, an associate at the London School of Economics, think tank LSE Ideas, told Newsweek that this showed Moscow's battlefield momentum. Instead of trying to gain new territory rapidly, the Russians engaged in a patient, slow, grinding campaign where they knew that their preponderance in artillery and firepower and Ukrainian demographic deficit would sooner or later result in the collapse of the Ukrainian line, Vuksanovic said. Russian forces have made their biggest advances in Ukraine in a year, capturing 75 square miles between October the 28th and November the 3rd and 66 square miles the previous week, according to Agents Vo. After the initial nine months of Russian blunders that resulted in a catastrophic pullback from the Kharkiv area and a more orderly retreat from Kherson, everything that the Russians have been doing ever since has led to this point, added Vuksanovic. There are higher estimates by Ukraine's Defense Ministry of Russian Losses, whose figures last week claimed Russia had lost 903 armored fighting vehicles in October, the highest monthly total since March 2022. Oryx's figures cited by Agents Vo also showed that Ukraine had lost 276 units of equipment in October, including 47 armored personnel carriers, 28 infantry fighting vehicles, 21 tanks, and one aircraft. Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Umarov confirmed that Ukrainian troops fought North Korean forces for the first time since Pyongyang sent its forces to help Russia. The minister made the corresponding statement in an interview with South Korean media Politico reports. According to Umarov, 
There were small-scale clashes between Kiev forces and North Korean soldiers. He did not provide any more details. The head of Ukraine's Center for Countering Disinformation, Andrei Kovalenko, said on Monday that North Korean troops have already come under fire in Russia's Kursk region. Asked whether North Korea's participation meant an official entry into the war, Umarov replied, Yes, I think so. These were clashes. We expect that in the coming weeks there will be more involvement of DPRK forces at the front. He added, Sources in Defense Intelligence of Ukraine have confirmed that the first clash between Ukrainian forces and North Korean troops has taken place in Russia's Kursk Oblast, according to the Financial Times. A senior Ukrainian intelligence official confirmed the military engagement between units of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and the Ukrainian military to the Financial Times, but declined to provide the specifics. He said the clash took place in Russia's Kursk Oblast, where Ukraine controls around 60 square kilometers, slightly more than the area its forces controlled immediately following this summer's Kursk offensive. Reported Tuesday, citing a senior Ukrainian and senior United States official. The Ukrainian official offered no details about casualties, but the US official said to the New York Times a significant number of North Korean troops were killed, according to the newspaper. The engagement was limited, and the North Koreans fought together with the Russian Naval Infantry Brigade, according to the Ukrainian official, the newspaper reported, adding it was unclear when the fighting took place. Over the weekend, defense intelligence of Ukraine said that Russia had armed the North Korean troops in Kursk with 60mm mortars, assault rifles, machine guns, sniper rifles, anti-tank guided missiles, and shoulder-launched anti-tank rocket launchers. Defense Intelligence of Ukraine also stated that some North Korean soldiers had also been provided with night vision devices and thermal images. A few hundred troops from North Korea's special forces have also been deployed in Kursk. Ukrainian officials and military analysts have raised questions about the quality and combat effectiveness of the North Korean troops, describing most of them as inexperienced, low-ranking soldiers. We will know soon how well they can fight, one of the officials told the Financial Times. Another high-ranking Ukrainian official said that Moscow was already providing military technologies to Pyongyang to help with its missile programs as well as money.